right, we're good. We're recording. Okay, so since we did not have um, a quorum last week, we didn't approve the minutes from the Monday, uh, the Monday meeting, and um, so we don't have minutes for the Thursday meeting because of the uh, uh, lack of a quorum to, to discuss things. So um, can we have a, a motion to uh, approve the minutes from last Monday, or is, does somebody have a comment on them or, or something? Mark, um, just a real quick, we are actually approving the minutes from our first um, meeting on 9-9. And so uh, the minutes from last Monday, it, it, either way, it's 9-9 nine, nine that we need to approve, which I recirculated last week. Okay. I can make that motion to approve 9-9 nine, nine minutes. Is there, a, is there a, a second? Sure. Okay, I'll take that as a, as a yes. All right, minutes are approved. Uh, so we we spent some uh, uh, good time last last week reviewing uh, so we warning labels and all, all variety of, of labels. And, um, we had uh, the good fortune of uh, making contact. And Danica took this initiative. Making contact with. Uh, uh, a, doing a, um, a doctor in um, he's in in Princeton, right? Is that where he still is? Yeah, he is. he's in Princeton, in New Jersey, uh, who has done a lot of work on um, on warning labels, uh, particularly for the cannabis industry, uh, and uh, he's he's he can foresee a time, as I think we all can, when when there will be national legalization and there will be a need to have some national standards for um, warning labels, for advisory statements and other things on, on both advertisements and, and packaging. So uh, maybe we should uh, start with a quick, uh, sure, quick sure. overview of that, Danica. Sure, let me actually add in a little bit of additional information. Um, for everyone on the call, Dr. David Nathan and his son Eli work on international standards now for um, cannabis not just for warning labels and warning signs, but also for packaging, which is one of our hot topics um, that we have uh, inside of this subcommittee to put forth recommendations on. So um, I'll be sharing, um, I'll be sharing some information additionally on that, but what um, Dr. Nathan, who is, he is an MD, Dr. Levine, so that you're aware, he's a psychiatrist, and what did he put forth um, with his son, what they put together is actually um, follows ISO 3864, International Warning Label Standards, so that's fantastic. So there's an element of ISO and ANSI, um, American National Standards Institute, and then also um, there's another um, organization in there that they follow as well. So, um, so Ingrid was with us last week. She saw some of this and gave some thoughts and opinions on it. Um, but additionally, uh, what's important that I'll be showing you today is some mock-ups that uh, I did just and I'm not a designer, but I'm enough of a designer uh, to show you what something might look like using some of their standards. Um, and then we'll be circulating some additional information for everyone on here. So the other item that I would add is that last week we shared um, some state specific uh, warning language that um, that is available online that follows different state statutes. And so what I did was a put together Mark and I a combination of what some of that might look like into a Word document that is marked as a draft, written as a draft, um, just for you all to have something to react to. Um, and maybe what I would like to do after this is is um, maybe take that away, mark it up, write on it, give your thoughts and perspectives, because it does follow, it's the natural progression of everything that we have put forth. So for you, Dr. Levine, and also Tim Wessel, who I don't believe is with us today, the only things you have not seen um, is a white paper that Dr. Nathan has put together um, for the state of New York that he said we could share with you, and then also these warning um, signs. So with that being said, Mark, feel free to jump in at any time. I'm gonna 
just go over. I always keep, we always keep what our deadline is, which we are now, um, we are now at the one month milestone of, of being able to be complete with this October 20th. So that is why we are accelerating um, with items for you that you'll be receiving after this meeting today. Um, hey, Danica. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. You're fine. I have been right waiting there. to see if, uh, if we would have any uh, further uh, attend uh, attendance. Uh, so okay. uh, whether we do or not, let's take let's take the uh, roll call the poll if we could. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so, um, Danica is present here. Um, oh, Tim Wessel is waiting in the lobby. That's excellent. Hey, Tim. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, sorry about that. Uh, I had real technical issues here for a moment. <laughs> okay, uh, also from NACB, um, we have Gina, Gina Cranwinkle, our CEO. Um, from uh, the advisory committee, we have a full house today. Uh, Ingrid Jones. Present. Uh, Dr. Mark Levine, Tim Wessel, here joining us uh, from the uh, uh, control board staff. We have, uh, let's see, Julie, Julie Holbert. Yep, we have Julie and Nellie in the room. And I just want to share with you that we can, um, because of the screen sharing, we can hear you and we can see your screen, but we can't see each person talking. So it would be helpful, I think, for those of us in the room if, if people just sort of say who they are when they talk for this time. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, of course. Okay, and you said there are three uh, uh, additional um, attendees in the uh, at your boardroom. Yes. Um, uh, Members of the public, members of the Vermont government. Yep, all members of the public. Okay, great. Excellent. As we get started, um, there were no public comments received in writing to the Public Health Committee. So um, at the end, we will, of course, at the 10 minute before the hour mark, offer the public the opportunity to make comments. Before we get started, Tim, Ingrid, or Dr. Levine, are there any questions um, that you may have? Not from me at this time. Okay. Not from Tim at this time, thanks. Okay, thank you so much. All right, very good. So um, Mark and I have actually melded phase one and two together. So we really have a phase one and a phase two, even though the bottom says three, um, because we know that these are the most pressing items. So uh, we'll be going over some of that information today and then edibles, some of that is already melding into also into phase one. So I'm gonna move forward on this. Um, I sent everyone, um, or Mark and I sent everyone on the subcommittee and also to the CCB um, some language that has been enacted in other states. And so there were commonalities that we saw across the board and then also some additional items observed. Um, of course, we saw in the, the very common, the ones that seemed to be the most common were impairment not operating machinery or driving, that things could be habit forming, not safe for kids, adults 21 and older, and that this should not be, marijuana should not be used by pregnant or breastfeeding women. There were also additional items noted and observed, um, such as delayed impairment by two hours or more with edibles. And um, Ingrid will touch on the edibles piece and some research that we've got um, coming your way as well, based on your comment the other day. Accidental ingestion with a poison control number, uh, not safe for pets, that there's limited information on health risks and um, again two elements related to children and then also psychoactives and synthetics uh, as it relates to things like delta 8. so um, in keeping with the theme that was requested of the public health committee we do believe that uh, massachusetts being as new as it is but all uh, they've really had the opportunity to hone in and evolve their messaging so um, and because they are a New England state, they're one that you'll find that we reference often. Um, 
for different items. There's some elements that they have combined with other states that I'll be sharing with you shortly on just what a draft again might look like of some of these items. It, it, I would like to tell everyone, other than creating a mock warning label, it is nothing that everyone has not already seen in some capacity through our, our meetings and also information that we provided to you um, as resources for these meetings. Um, then also, we believe this is a good um, starting point as well, One of this long guideline for Massachusetts that may be related to the in-store warning flyer that needs to be available to the public. And we can talk a little bit more about that. That is not something that has been completely drafted yet for you to react to, but that is also in the works. Could I just ask a quick question? Sure, absolutely. Is everyone seeing content right now? Because I, it, my screen says can't display content. Oh no. So I'm not sure why. It's definitely um, coming through Microsoft Teams. It says can't display content. I have the other, the, what you're speaking of in front of me, I think, but um, I don't know why I'm not getting that display. Um, you know what? Let me forward this to you or. Uh, I, I think I have it. it. Okay. I mean, you the, it, going over the different states yep. warnings and stuff and such. I printed it out old school and everything, but I just wanted okay. to see if I was the only one who wasn't seeing something here. It's a technically challenging morning um, for no sure. So from there and Mark, I'm going to let you take over as because I'm sitting outside and it's a little noisy right here on other pieces of Massachusetts. OK, the Massachusetts uh, uh, guidelines. Um, uh, in terms of uh, packaging, uh, also include uh, and, and, and warning language include uh, uh, what's considered to be, you know, acceptable uh, uh, font size in order to ensure uh, uh, legibility, of course, and um, and a ten point Times New Roman uh, or Arial. Are, uh, which are both very common and, and uh, I think we probably all use many times is, you know, it's not real big, but, uh, you know, a package isn't necessarily real big either. So keep out of reach of children, for, for example, is a, uh, common, uh, a common theme on, on the labels. Uh, the cannabis products um, that contain multiple uh, servings have to have a statement that, uh, uh, points that out and says how many servings in the package and also how many ser how many uh, milligrams usually of a, of a THC are in a single serving. So uh, again, uh, serve the, the font size is going to be 10 point uh, at, a, at a minimum. Is that I, I know everybody's spends a lot of time in front of a screen. Does that seem to me a uh, uh, you know an acceptable reasonable minimum size for uh, for warning labels on a package. I think as we go through here, we'll try to ask uh, you know your uh, consensus on on things like this so that we can start checking them off. We don't have to review them again and again. Yeah, this is this is Tim speaking. Um, it seems like that would be a good minimum to have um, anything under. 10 point is um, pushing the limits of <laughs> yeah. non reading glasses material for me. I know. So. <laughs> That's why I always take my glasses to the grocery store. OK, um, I concur with this. Good, thanks. So where I see a challenge coming in and we can talk about this when I share another document and, and Tim, I'm trying to get these over to you is that um, when we go to something like a tamper-proof label, um, it's just something we'll all need to think about. I was able to make these warnings 10-point, um, just so you could see, but at the sacrifice of other things. So if a tamper-proof warning label is somewhere that we're going, um, that will most definitely be something that we need to take into consideration so that we can balance everything. All right, Mark, I'm going to flip ahead if you want to talk about these international st standards and I'm going to get try and get this over to you, Tim. 
Yeah, Danica mentioned uh, Dr. Nathan, who has uh, and his son have developed these uh, a lot of these uh, uh, graphics, and um, you've seen this before. We, we had some conversation about whether uh, it was a good, you know, portrayal of a, of a cannabis leaf. Uh, so I think this is the one that we. I think this. This graphic is one that we all agreed was more realistic. So um, we've seen before, uh, number four, this is Vermont. Um, we've seen others that are similar to this that say Massachusetts uh, or Maine. And, uh, and I think there was, there was a growing consensus that we should probably try to standardize, you know, with our with the uh, other states in, in New England. So everybody has a clear understanding of what this is conveying. So one thing I'd like to add about this, and Tim, I did just hit send, so you should receive something at any moment, and we'll be on slide nine of 21. One thing I'd like to convey with this that's important and why this particular symbol may matter, and we also have some comparisons to other states, is that these do follow ISO 3864, which is standardized safety signs, international safety signs. And so what the Nathans did was prepare for Vermont um, six different examples that could be used. And when I do share some additional information, I did pick number two with THC and VT just to show, but any of them would work. And the, the other important thing that um, that is for these these standards for packaging and also warning labels that is is nice is that they are available at no charge to be used or adapted by um, regulators and others um, that are in the industry. So we did speak a little with Ingrid on this the other day and Ingrid, I know you've seen this twice. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts on these symbols. So. Um, Tim, I know you may be opening it up. Dr. Levine, do you have any considerations here that you'd uh, that work for you? And this would be a symbol, a, a constant warning symbol. Um, I mean, you, you wanted it to be consistent across New England, you were saying. Well, consistent across New England, absolutely with language at a minimum. Um, but we can certainly do, you know, what Massachusetts has, but we wanted to share with you this that does follow ISO. And we yeah, can go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember what Massachusetts looked like. Um, <clears throat> I, like I like Vermont spelled out and I like THC. Um, but I'm not sure I, I like number two or number three. <laughs> gotcha. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a, if you can see it, I don't know if it's the way, yeah. it's the right way to do it. That's great. But uh, we've got uh, Massachusetts and Maine, Maine's THC. Uh, so it's a similar, similar graphic. I don't think that's me. I just have a question about why we got away from red and moved to yellow in this. Just wondering. Sure, I think no we talked about red before. That is the ISO piece of this, is that yellow is an international symbol of caution and warning, not necessarily a symbol of stop. And so, again, we were following the ISO principles behind this. We can certainly take this same thing and go to red if you'd like to see it um, that way. But it is that is the thing, and this also keeps in line a little with uh, just the, the the caution element, and that's why they use yellow, and that is also their justification in that. Thank you. No problem, Tim. Any thoughts? Uh, and your your uh, the consensus so far has been for number two. Is that correct? I don't think we have a consensus. I think okay. this is this is our starting point on. Um, the following the international standards um, piece. I think the the leaf, um, my leaf concerns are alleviated. So that's a much better leaf to use. It's perfect, I think. Um, THC is good to be on there. 
Uh, my only comment is the the red triangle did seem to be a little bit more of an eye catcher and um, more cautionary to to the layman, I think. Um, and by my eye, the yellow seems. I mean, it, this could just be just the the particular uh, print or whatever, but the yellow seems pretty mellow, so to speak, uh, especially when you look at it compared to the highlighting. So um, if we're if we're abandoning the red, I would advocate for a brighter yellow requirement or something. But I would say we are not abandoning anything um, at this point. This is um, first signal, first sign for reaction to um, we'll make this similar a similar sign with red on it and let everyone see it as well and that can be done today when um, some additional materials that i'm going to share will go out to you okay great yeah and my again my concern would be that if we're not using the red if it has to be a two color for instance or whatever um the yellow is a little mellow and uh that might be variable so we, you might even lose the if cautionary effect so with that here, color only so. okay in the age of digital printing it's not like it was years ago a four you know you can do more with color than we could 20 years ago um so i think that it, it's it's all doable i would say and again a, a opportunity for something to react to great okay I'm going to go on to the next slide. And again, we've you've already seen these, but advertising guidelines and examples up. Um, this is California's notice, and the reason we show it is because it's very concise. You have a copy of it. We'll send it uh, again. And then an advertising checklist and why that matters is because it lets the licensee or the dispensary uh, people know what they need to do in order to be in compliant with what is required of them by the state. Yeah. So and we, we have developed this as a, uh, also with a green bar at the top uh, and uh, <laughs> sort of mocked up a uh, uh, cannabis control board um, version of this that can be used to uh, notify either advertisers or staff who's, who are in charge of looking at the advertisements. So we'll send that out with our next package as well. Yes. So from there, this is only to remind everyone of the language that would be used for the handout, the health and safety handout that would go with the purchase of cannabis. Um, and how I envision this to be as a marketer is this would almost be something um, that they could either print and have as a trifold or print and have a tear off pad and be able to hand out this language to people as they purchased should they choose to take it. And Tim, I think you'll like a way that we change the words on the warning that cannabis is illegal under federal law. Um, we've got some thoughts on that that may be a little bit better for you all. So I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to pull up a Word document, which may be a little harder to see. Tim, I did email that to you, but I can blow it up some, but everyone will get the Word document. Um, with any you know modifications that we may do today before we go further um, any additional questions or thoughts um, before I uh, bring that up okay I'm going to upload another document Mark, if you want to pick up for just a second, I'm going to pause myself while I pull this, okay? Sure. Um, all right, so we need uh, health warnings for cannabis packages as well as cannabis advertisements. Um, and I want to uh, get back to something that I mentioned before, which is uh, sort of perplexing language in, um, in the statute that says that if there is a chance that an advertisement uh, would uh, be misleading rather than just saying no to the advertisement it uh, there's the option of putting a warning label on it and um, I was uh, I've been I've 
puzzling about this, and I, it just occurred to me that you know there's an awful lot of, there are an awful lot of advertisements and, and packages in the market today, especially with say uh, nutritional supplements that say uh, caution these uh, this product has not been uh, analyzed by the FDA or it has not been approved for any kind of medical use or anything like that. So maybe that's really what the drafters of the of the statute had in mind. And um, since this didn't occur to me until uh, this morning, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll write up some things based on what else is in the marketplace and uh, send those along as well as uh, the more standard, um, you know, the more standard warnings and disclaimers uh, that, that for, for your consideration and, and, you know, for your approval. Um, Can everyone see the, my screen now? Sorry, Mark. Please yeah. pinch. Yes, okay. I can see it too. Happy okay, to great. Fantastic. So for everyone on here, um, Mark, I don't want to interrupt you if there was something additional you wanted to say. No, no, I was just going to say, uh, you know, in the interest of sort of moving this process along, I think there's a lot, a lot here that we're, we agree on that we're comfortable with because we've mm -hmm. seen it in the, in the marketplace. And, uh, and uh, I think we need maybe just to circulate a draft of some of these things for, for you all Agreed. to check off in advance of the next meeting. So that we can. Which we will do that today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the intent of this document is to show what something might look like. And for everyone on here, the, the language in here is language that has been circulated or that we have all seen in some capacity, be it from another state or from another um, item but what the intent was was to put it all on paper so that you as the subcommittee and so that julie and her team could take a look at something as, and and actually see what a tangible item might look like it is clearly marked draft i would also like to say that these are not final they are for discussion purposes only and will of course require a professional layout so what's important here is that it goes through um, some of the items that we saw or that really stood out to us. And it starts off with um, basically the licensee or any person needs to comply with the statutes by the Cannabis Control Board. Any advertising or promoting must identify the licensee responsible for the advertising content. Um, that's something that would definitely want to be considered so that you know who was doing whatever was out there, including possibly and again, this is for you to react to their brand and dispensary name and possibly their state license number on the advertising. Um, but we're going to lump everything together and say promotion. I'm not going to read necessarily to everyone on here, but it does follow different elements of the statute and may not be all encompassing at this moment, but it talks about what you shouldn't do. And we start with children. Ingrid, I know that's something that you often come back to. But anything like toys, inflatables, characters, um, friendly depictions of food um, or any other consumable. And then it also, um, you don't want it to appeal to anyone under the age of 21. Then any use of minors or images of minors under 21. This one is not, um, is one that we added in, which is to be located within a thousand feet of a daycare center, school, playground or other youth center. That is something we have seen in other states when it comes to advertising. Um, they shouldn't publish or disseminate anything without first obtaining reliable and verifi verifiable up-to-date audience composition. And this follows your statute where 85% of the audience viewing the advertising or promotion should be 21. No free goods or giveaways of any type. Um, it needs to, you should not promote anything false, untrue, or create some misleading impression and includes um, any statement concerning a brand or product inconsistent with any statement on the labeling thereof. And I'll show you a label in a moment. Um, and so again, everyone will get this and the opportunity to review it um, or, or have your team or staff review it as well. Um, then this follows similar to what Massachusetts had done, which is the overall warning where it talks about no FDA approval, limited health information, um, pregnancy and breastfeeding and the harm, Draw, it's illegal to drive, keep it away from kids, could be health risks associated, may impair concentration, coordination and judgment, 
that edibles may be delayed two hours and accidental ingestion with poison control or 911. And then this product may be illegal outside of Vermont. And then also adds it's illegal to transport cannabis across state lines. The, it may be some of these, maybe all of these. I did just notice I didn't put the habit forming in there, but what I would like to ask the um, control board at this point is, is the start of this document keeping in the spirit of what you would like to see? Just as a gut reaction. Yes. Okay, fantastic. And for the subcommittee, does it, is this meeting your expectation of what you'd like to be able to react to, possibly add or take away? I would say yes. This is Tim. Okay. I do have a question. Sure. Uh, have we uh, examined that requirement of at least 85% of audience? I mean, isn't, did we learn at a couple meetings ago that that is higher than, than other standard in other states? You are, uh, that is in the statute and 85% I believe is also what Massachusetts is doing. I know, for example, California does 70%. Um, 21 or older in the audience. So that is why it's it specifically states 85%. The I'll, I'll give you another quick example, Tim, like the be located within a thousand feet of a daycare center, school playground or youth center, uh, daycare center that is. Um, I don't recall seeing that exactly in the statute, but that may be something that the subcommittee would like to recommend as a consideration for cannabis advertising. So, um, so that's why you may see more in here than, um, and, and we can clearly mark some of those items. Ingrid or Dr. Levine, any considerations or thoughts? I just had a, sep a separate question. Sure. I, I'm wondering, in the, along the lines of accidental ingestion, I'm aware of sort of the fact that any type of edible <laughs> related things may not be intentionally branded toward children, but generally things with sugar and that are gummy related are delicious looking and are attractive to people of all ages. And I just wonder in terms of, um, you know, child resistant packaging and do we, is the, I can't remember what our law says in terms of child resistant packaging for edibles in terms of avoiding or helping with accidental ingestion concerns. Without having it in front of me, it definitely does talk about tamper proof and I will pull that for you um, in there. And, and so the, with purchasing some of those items, um, they typically are sealed but to what extent i think we should dive into um, and you'll see on one of the next pages that packaging is is gonna we're gonna definitely be talking about that within the next one or two meetings and i i, I appreciate your comments on that because it is incredibly important dr levine thoughts <clears throat> you know just some sort of editorial thought that this bottom paragraph that you have up there now would benefit from the same bulleting that you used in the above. Okay. For clarity and to make sure people almost have a checklist to Agreed. Uh, adhere to. Got it. Thank you for that. Tim, does this address or make you, um, does it feel a little different than to say federally illegal to use this product, maybe illegal outside of Vermont? Um, it, yes. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a little complicated. I mean, I think um, it's a friendly say the same thing. Um, whether or not that's a good thing is, is something I'll have to think about myself. No problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, for everyone on the subcommittee, that is the intent of this document is for you to have reactions to write on it, type over it, whatever your thoughts are, so that what we can do is marry all three of your thoughts and mine and Mark's recommendations for something to put forth to the CCB. So additionally, 
I we broke this out then in pro in in different things product advertising um you know specifically if something was going to be advertised say in a um magazine ad and i have seen some of those where that may have one disclaimer um these could be some of the required statements now again we have taken these um from what massachusetts has done but what massachusetts does is you have to do the first bullet and then any two of the next um five i did not put that in there because i believe that um as the subcommittee it it's your considerations for what you feel are the best things for your constituents and, the, and, and your consumers in the state of vermont versus saying pick and choose two if you decide that an advertiser should pick and choose two that's okay but if you would like something more or something less i believe that is um, the responsibility of the subcommittee and the recommendations in that area but to remind you massachusetts does the first one and then any two of the below for advertising. This is also a reminder. Um, any thoughts on that before we move on? We're almost done with these pieces. Just a quick question. You said yeah. um, Massachusetts requires please consume responsibly and then uh, other bullets below any two? Any two below. OK. And I am um, editing while we're speaking, if you guys can see that. Um, so that you, when, when you receive this document, you will know. You know, I think um, I was going to suggest that because somewhere else, I don't know exactly where, I was seeing that a state always put marijuana product. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you have please consume responsibly, it would be great to begin it with this is a marijuana product, please consume responsibly. Um, because you'd you never know where the, sort of the connection of marijuana might get lost in the in the um, packaging from the retail um, from the producer. Agreed. I don't know. Just just something to throw out there that you sort of combine. It's a short sentence anyway, so maybe we can squeeze in there that it's make it clear that it's a marijuana product. Excellent. Any other thoughts um, from the subcommittee on this area? So when you were talking about the any two? Yes. Um, that's in what frame of reference are we? Like, where is this if, showing up? If you, um, if an advertiser was advertising a product, for example, in a magazine where they had a print ad, that would be an example of where it may show up. Um, so that would be the, the only spot. Or if they had any posters even in their store promoting cannabis um, of a product. So it, it would truly be something that is visual to um, to a consumer. Okay, because I'm, I'm looking at this list and it's just so hard to like exclude something. Agreed. Because each item is so unique it's not like if we left out the pregnant or breastfeeding, we're fine because we've said it may cause impairment. You know, uh, I mean, it, it's so hard to sort of look at those in isolation and say they can't be a grouping because they all are addressing different aspects of the caution statement. You know, one that's probably one reason why the federal tobacco uh, labeling rules have a, uh, I don't know, they have something like a dozen different warnings that uh, are supposed to be rotated, uh, maybe, I don't know how many per year, but uh, they get, they are rotated uh, on the packages. And um, so that you, it's kind of like a moving, you know, it's a, it's like a, it's a moving warning and, and it uh, probably gets people's attention a little bit better. Uh, and uh, you know, we could we could take a look at what that would be. Yeah, I mean, it is hard to read a list, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if each item on the list is so unique and important, it's hard to exclude. True. Yeah, if you, but if, and if you if you print them all together and on one, one label, that becomes like too much information. Exactly. Okay. 
Danica, can Ingrid I interject Danica. for a second? Yes. Did you share with I'm us this? Did you share with us a sample that had a QR code on it? A I have sample that had a QR code. I have not shared a QR code yet, but we can. Okay. That could I go just, to a warning page. Right. No, that's I just a, that's an excellent if that would be point. helpful to this particular concern. You got it. Which also then would go into the additional recommendation, which is not on here um, on this particular page, but that of um, how we expand the warnings um, and the educational aspect online. Okay. Ingrid, do you have anything you'd like to add here? No, I, I agree with the concerns as they've been highlighted. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Levine uh, circulated last week a, a, an advisory from the CDC about um, total THC um, being important to know. And I think that uh, that problem is with Delta, Delta 8 and that uh, there are products now being uh, introduced in the market that not only have uh, Delta 9, but, but Delta 8 as well. And if you are not um, advising your consumers of the total level of THC, then you know you, some people are going to run into trouble with uh, uh, you know with uh, too much exposure. Uh, seems like this. That what they're at, what they're advising is, uh, is that that be uh, considered as a warning. You can see it, and I don't uh, haven't seen that in any other states, uh, but it's something that we will we'll mock something up for your consideration. And that and that has to do with the moving target aspect of everything yep. we do in this. Um, we're gonna have the benefit of starting fresh and be the newer kid on the block so we can incorporate something like that but we still can't possibly anticipate what will come next because there will be a next and a next and a next so we have to make sure our wording uh, allows for that kind of flexibility so that if the future changes it won't be hard to work it in i really um appreciate that and I also appreciate what Julie just noted on QR codes because there is the opportunity for rapid change and a lot of consumers now are it, it's something that's become the norm because of COVID-19 to take your phone out and scan a menu so there is a similar aspect of it's in our nature right now to see QR codes um, and so I think there is tremendous opportunity here because things can be done in real time. So as we also mentioned, um, one of the things that we truly do like is the 10 point font, that it is an easily legible font. Um, I would take times out of there and I don't have that an example to show you why, but I will show you one. I did not pop it in here today because it's it's a little harder to read as it's a more curved font. It has more of a serif to it. Um, keep out of reach of children and then also includes multiple servings. And again, we haven't necessarily scratched the surface on the edible packaging and, and, and the overall packaging aspect yet. So I'd like to revisit um, I'd like to revisit the uh, the warning labels because what I've done for the subcommittee and the CCB, and this is again something to react to, is put together um, a quick label. And the reason I say quick is is I want you to be able to see it. But this, I'm going to blow my screen up a little, and there's a specific reason why. If you were to research cannabis labels online that are for tamper proof, they typically are 2.75 inches by 0.75 inches. So this is an, a quick example using number two right here, but with um, four different warnings because of space. And the only thing that's those 
at the top or not, of course, 10 point font, they can't be, they won't fit. But the may contain multiple servings is just a different way that I put it on there in the event. And then that is eight point and then keep out of reach of children is 10. So this would be, and again, we, we need a graphic designer to do this for us, but this would be a starting point for what a tamper proof label may be able to look like. A tamper proof um, sticky label, I should say, especially for something that was packaged on premise. I will tell you, um, and I'll put these in here, some additional items that I am seeing and this would come down um, where, you know, on a compliance and enforcement side. And I don't see, I, I'm with you, Dr. Levine, I don't see how you can see all of these items. But one of the very first things I saw on one of these was a, uh, the very first thing said, uh, do not consume until you reach your destination. So that was an additional <laughs> thought if for someone who bought it in there, not much different than, than alcohol. You're not supposed to consume on premises, but I did want to put that out there. So this is an aerial style font. And again, um, it just is a first thing for you to see what something might look like. And when you see it in your Word document, it'll make, um, you'll be able to see actual size. You know, that do not open container until you've, re you've reached your destination yes. is a backwards way of saying, you know, don't, don't smoke consume. and drive or, 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 in or the whatever, parking lot. don't operate a vehicle or heavy machinery while using it. Um, I'm wondering if maybe that is just a little too much repetition. Possibly. And I know I say this a lot, so everyone please forgive me. This is definitely an area where I, I want you to have something to react to. Because as I've said in my career, um, when people see things, they either know what they like or they know what they don't like or it misses the mark altogether. Um, but without a visual, it's a little tougher. And I, I do want to, for the group, note that we are at 10 minutes till, uh, because I will be, for public comments, since I will be sending this out, I will share uh, quickly that this is what a paragraph would look like. And the only reason I put a paragraph in here was due to limited space. So I wanna give everyone a chance to say anything. So from there, um, additional items to be built, packaging, checklists for development, how to submit for approvals. And I do wanna add the QR code element um, for consideration here as well. Julie, do, before we move, I would, I know it's time for public comments, but do we have any, um, and if so, if not, um, may we continue? It does not appear that we have any public comment. Um, okay. Danica, I wonder, is part of your wrap up talking about any decisions that you can make maybe on Thursday related to yes. these? Okay, perfect. Absolutely. So what, um, what we'd like to do is, first off, I did want everyone to see this and if there's any um, reaction or first consideration of what something might look like if it was the entire label, um, you know, I welcome your feedback now or in writing. I can just, are you asking a comparison? Yeah. The narrative so, versus the bullet point. Yeah, more so the narrative versus the bullet point. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think the bullet point in caps are sort of much more to the point, although I do like the reference to poison control hotline. Which could be its own bullet. Which yeah. could be its own bullet. You know that I like bullets. Um, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> what do the marketing people in the world say about how often anybody reads anything uh, on a warning label? Do we, I mean, with all the tobacco experience we have and stuff, do we actually know? So I will tell you from my perspective is no matter what, it takes a consumer three times of seeing something for them to get it. So whether they read necessarily the label or not, the idea of this type of label is you can't get in the package without seeing it. 
because it goes over the top. So that helps, number one. Um, and so definitely something for us to consider. I would also add that that is definitely the reason for, you know, bright and red and all caps on some of whatever it is that you want to get out there. So Dr. Levine, you know, I would welcome, once we send this back out, you had mentioned your own internal um, public health marketing team and even some of, you know, their reactions on this so that we can keep this moving forward if you if you would be so inclined. I think uh, in answer to, I think it was Julie's question, I think it would be a good idea for us to put something like a ballot together. Yep. Uh, where we can uh, get that out to you, uh, you know, by the, in the next day or, or so that itemizes the, the things that we think we're ready to take a decision on. And, um, and uh, and where what we move on to after that, and it's not a ballot to be filled in and mailed back, but uh, just something that we can check check through pretty easily, uh, pretty quickly on Thursday. Does that sound okay to everyone? Would that be a good way to approach? It does sound fine. Did you, Danica? Did you say that there'll be one more chance to weigh in on the label itself? Oh. There's many chances to weigh okay. in. I truly just wanted to give the subcommittee something to see, you know, okay. something to I see. And, and, and some additional thoughts, but I'm I happy to share that uh, at another another quick meeting. I am fantastic with that. That is truly a um, because we are starting from scratch. It was our goal to give you something to see. COVID test So. Um, Julie, is there anything additional you'd like us to add here before we wrap? I think, you know, we have our marching orders and some uh, things that we need to do, but to make sure that we're also um, in line with where the process should be. And again, then we could move on to packaging after this. Yeah, I think if, if folks take the time to kind of review everything that you've discussed today, and then you can tick through a list on Thursday of, of some decision points, I think that would be great. Fantastic. So Mark and I will get something out to the team. Um, additional, Tim, I'll, uh, I sent you this Word doc, but I'll update it and send it to you again uh, with some additional notes in it. But um, any thoughts or considerations, we, we certainly welcome them. And um, especially if we're missing something or if you feel like something needs to come out um, or go in that we welcome that because, again, our job is to bring the recommendations forth to the CCB. Mark, I'll let you take it away from here. Um, I thank everyone for your uh, time and consideration today. Thank you. Uh, it's time to adjourn. Do we have a motion? Somebody like to move that we adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Excellent. Subcommittee is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.